Hi, my name is Vinicius Sanger, and today we are going to talk about Raspberry Pi I Square C bus with Java C embedded and Pi 4J. For start talking about I Square C, let's remember the Raspberry Pi GPIO. We have 17 pins, seven digital for general usage, one PWM, two pins are used by I Square C bus, five used by SPI, and two for UART communication. Digital ports, you are going to read or write 0 or 1, turning on and turning off the port, and it will be represented by the voltage 0 voltage or 3.3 volts if the port's turned on. We don't have any kind of analog port in Raspberry Pi GPIO, so if you need to read some analog sensor, you need to buy an external analog converter. The PWM uh, is a modularization of a digital port and it's used to control speed uh, or the power of that port. So it will pulse uh, 0 and 1 in a certain period of time, meaning how much power you want uh, to drive something. And with two or more digital ports, you can cre start creating your communication protocol between devices and components. You don't need to create your own protocol because we already have some industry standard protocols. The most famous are UART communication is the serial, classic serial communication. The SPI is a high speed bus for complex components. And the I square C that is our target today is also a bus, but in this case for low speed interface. Square C means interintegrated circuit and is also known as two wire interface TWI. It was invented by Philips in 17 and it's a multimaster bus, serial bus. Uh, is intended for low speed communication and since 2006 you don't need to pay for that. The big advantage around I square C is that you you are going to use just two wires to plug different components into your board. You have the data line and the clock line, and with the same two wires, two pins, you can plug many different components. Architecture looks like this. Uh, you have the Raspberry Pi actuating as a master device, and you have your uh, I square C components, slave components like the digital analog converter, analog digital converter, and in this case, a LCD, that is the component we will be showing today. To start playing with I square C and Raspberry Pi, you must uh, enable the Raspberry Pi I square C support uh, doing. Uh, three uh, simple steps. First one, you need to set up the modules file, install I square C tools, and remove I square C from Linux blacklist. The first step is to edit the slash etc slash modules, so you can use your preferred uh, editor and like Nano or VI, edit this file and just put these lines into your file. Next step to install I square C tools it will be very useful to debug and everything. So you must uh, type sudo apt-get uh, install Python smbus and I square C tools. And the last step is to remove I square C from Linux blacklist by editing this raspi blacklist uh, .com file. And you just need to comment by adding a hash the beginning of uh, these two lines. So you are ready to wire up and go. In this case, we have this picture of a gyroscope and accelerometer component. I took this picture from Angela Caicedo's blog. Uh, if you need more information, we will provide you the link in the end of this presentation. And this case, we are just 
plugging, uh, connecting two wires from the component into the lines, I square C lines of your Raspberry Pi GPIO. And we are plugging the VCC in the 3.3 volts and the ground into the ground pin of your Raspberry Pi GPIO. Very simple, easy. To start playing with Java C and I square C, you must use Pi4J since we don't have any uh, standard library for doing that with Java C embedded. We do have for Java Me embedded, but we, we, we don't have not yet uh, any kind of uh, JSR for uh, GPIO in uh, Java C embedded. So if you never played before with Pi4J, I recommend you to watch our uh, video. In this URL is very complete and uh, you can learn how to do the basic steps. Basic code for J I square C will look like this. Uh, you have a I square C device instance, I square C bus instance that you are going uh, uh, to to get the instance using the I square C factory and providing the bus number. The bus number in the case of you have Raspberry Pi revision 2 will be number 1. If you have the revision, the very first board, it will be the number 0. And here we are ready to uh, get the communication with our device by providing the address. So I square C bus, get device and the address. The address uh, is uh, an hexadecimal uh, number and you must read the documentation of your component to know about this number. Once you have uh, uh, the communication with your device, you are ready to read and write data using device.write, device.read, and you have four different methods for doing that. So let's look uh, our example today, we have this very nice Adafruit LCD. This LCD is, uh, uh, you have the backlight, you have some buttons here, and it's very easy to start playing. It's very simple component. Let's look at the code here. So I have this project. This project is available for you to download. And we have here, uh, a main method class and here we have the bus number one and the component the LCD is identified by 0x20. In this case we have a class called the fruit LCD plate that implements the LCD interface. Since we have many different types of operation we can do with our LCD, all the complexity was encapsulated by this class. So we have a, a loop here, and our sample example will be painting welcome, sleeping, seconds, here the display, painting Oracle OTN, sleep two seconds, clear, and so print IoT dev challenge. If we look inside the else a fruit cd plate this class will be uh doing this code so we have bus instance here i square c bus instance we provide the number one for the bus and here we got the communication with the device and all the operations that we can do in our lcd will be identified by different uh uh, hexadecimal numbers. So let's look at the paint operation. Uh, here we have the clear. So we are going to write CD clear display, which is a constant. And uh, to print, write our our LCD. Let's look at the code. So here we have the write method. And we are going to write the data by using this method. Basically, it will make some configuration and after all, writing uh, the bytes that you send as data to your display. It's very simple. Uh, and 
must know very, very well your I2C component by reading the documentation. Some I2C components, they can provide more or less operation depending on the type of the component. So let's look to this running code in our Raspberry Pi. Actually, Raspberry Pi Revision 2 has two different I2C buses, the bus number 0 and the bus number 1. The number 1 is the bus into the GPIO pins that we uh, use it today. The number 0 is used by default for uh, camera control. You can use this another bus for your applications, but you must solder a uh, mail pins into this additional GPIO that is presented only in the revision 2. And you must turn off the camera support to use this another I2C bus. This is very useful when you have complex implementations, complex projects with many, many different types and a big amount of I2C components being plugged into your Raspberry Pi board. We use our Raspberry Pi as master device. You can think about using a Raspberry Pi as a slave device, like ah, I would like to connect two Raspberry Pis using I2C. It could be possible. You have the hardware support, but you don't. You don't have the. Uh, Linux support for that. So you would need to uh, make some changes and recompile the kernel. Here are some links. The first one is from Angela Caicedo's blog about uh, I2C gyroscope and accelerometer with Pi4j and etc. Very complete and nice uh, post about this component. If you are looking to use that, this is the right place. And the other one is the official uh, PDF with all the schematics detail around your Raspberry Pi board. If you have any type of technical question, uh, we will be happy to support you at Oracle Community website. Just type community oracle.com in the end of the site the site you will find the java embedded click here and here we have iot developer challenge uh, forum just click here uh, log in into the community and send your question